Hello, this is Pastor Dave from Harvest Christian Ministries International. We are so excited that you decided to join us on our YouTube channel. We ask that you would give us a thumbs up, that you would share, that you would like, and that you would also subscribe. And remember, please hit that notification bell. That way you're notified every single time that we upload our videos. We ask that this ministry is being a blessing to you, that you will partner with us financially so that we can continue to promote the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. We look forward to seeing you soon, and remember that the harvest is truly right. The vision of Harvest Christian Ministries International. Harvest Christian Ministries International is a place where the Lord of the Harvest has called us to gather souls for the kingdom of God. Our goals are to equip laborers in the vineyard of the Lord by preaching and teaching the word of God, healing the sick, and ministering to the needs of others. We are a mature, supernatural body of believers, full of the Godhead bodily. We believe we have received our end-time harvest now of all that God has sown for us from the beginning of the foundation of the world. This is our season, this is our time. For the harvest is truly ripe. Father, I stand before you in prayer today. Not for myself, but for anyone who needs you right now. Father, whatever it is that someone is going through today, please help them and take away their burden. If there's someone who is weak, I pray for their strength for them. If there's someone who is sick, I pray for your divine healing for them. If someone is lost, please be their guide. If someone is anxious, please calm their mind. Please provide comfort to the brokenhearted and be their reminder that you are with them. Help them to hold onto their faith in you. Fill their hearts with your peace and gladness in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Great God. This morning I'll be reading from 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verses 23 through 26. Sing unto the Lord all the earth, shoot forth from day to day his salvation. Declare his glory among the heathen, his marvelous works among all nations. For great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. He also is to be feared above all God. For all the gods of the people are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Amen.
I declare unto you that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for you and for I. There's a treasure cold that God has in heaven. And it is his desire that his children be blessed beyond measure. It is the will of God that there be a distinction between you and the world. No one should be able to look at us and look at the world and say, well, they act just like the world acts. God has called us a royal priesthood, a chosen generation. We have the unique responsibility of carrying out the will of God in the earth. Regardless of your position in life, God has purpose in you. What we've been endeavoring to do this year is to get us to a position to where we raise our level of expectation in every area of our lives. Because God has such an expectation from us, I think it only fair that we should have an expectation from God. Let's pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I thank you for this opportunity to come before the people of God, your sheep. I thank you, Father, for this day that you've made. We have made a decision to rejoice and to be glad in you. Father, I pray that you open the eyes of the people of God, that they may see, open their ears, that they may hear. Dear Lord Jesus, give them a heart to understand. For we believe that the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church today, and for that we give you praise and much thanksgiving in Jesus' name. And all the church said, amen. amen. I want to put your hands together. Give the Lord a round of, of praise, a round of, 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 of praise, adoration to our God, where we have the lifting of our hands and the lifting of our voices and the stomping of our feet and making a joyful noise unto the Lord, all we land, glory to God. Yeah. Hallelujah. We want the floodgates of heaven to be open unto us. Hallelujah. And, and that's activated by our prayers. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm going to make an attempt to stay in one place today. Amen. Praise our holy God. Hallelujah. You know, again, we've been talking on here about raising our level of expectations. You can be seated. Raising our level of expectations in every area of our lives. And the last few weeks, we've been teaching on raising our level of expectations in our praise and in our worship. Is that all right? Amen. And I, I pray that you've been getting something out of this, that your time with God, that there's a shift that's taking place, that now you understand what praise is and what your worship is. Is that good? Yeah. I, I, I did some, some, some looking around, some researching and about this area of praise and worship. And there's this quote that caught my eye and it says, until God opens the next door. Somebody say next door. Next door. Until God opens the next door, I'll just praise God in the hallway. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm going to say that again. Until God opens the next door, I'll just praise God in the hallway. Yeah. So in the meantime, yeah, and in, in the meantime, while you're waiting on God, take the time and give him praise. I, I believe that opens the door to your blessings. Amen. Uh, there was another quote that says, there's no greater act of worship than giving God all of you. Mm -hmm. See, everyone, they, they know how to conduct praise. We, we, we do it every day. Uh, you praise your wife for 
uh, her job that she has or taking care of the children or preparing the meals, you, you praise her for the job that she has done. Or you, you praise your husband for being a provider. You praise your husband for picking up the kids. You praise your husband because he's worked the overtime just so you have additional income so you can go to Norms or to wherever, or to Macy's or wherever you like to shop. Um, you, you even praise your employees. You, you thank them for the job well done. You, you even thank your boss for having the job. You, you, you praise your children for when they make the D's list. You, you praise your children when they make A's and B's and, and are great students, or even when they make an attempt to clean the room. Mm -hmm. uh, you, 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 you praise your sports team. I mean, even if your team don't have a name and they beat you know, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, the Super Bowl champions, and you, even, you praise them. But I, I'm here, I'm just trying to express, trying to express that we already know how to praise. Isn't that right? Yeah, so we, we render our praises unto God. When we open our mouths and sing songs on the radio, when you sing songs with YouTube, when you sing songs through your MP3 player, or whatever your medium is, you, you, you already know how to praise. Uh, when you lift up your voice, the, the lifting up of your hands uh, for the score or for the stomping of your feet or the dance to a song is called praise. So, 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 so don't tell me you don't know how to praise. Mm -hmm. So all we're attempting to do, Pastor Cal and I, is to raise your level of expectation in your praise and in your worship. And I said earlier that God has this, this expectation from us. Therefore, if he has an expectation from us, then therefore it's only fair. Somebody say fair. It, yeah. It's only fair that, and, 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 uh, that, that we would have the same expectation from God. That if he has an expectation from us, then we can expect something from him. And, and I've been saying this all year, and I'm going to say it again. I say that when we meet God's expectations, that's true prosperity. Will you say that with me again? When we meet God's expectations, that's true prosperity. And don't get thrown off by the last word, prosperity. Prosperity means a, a, a host of things. It's not just in your finances. Prosperity is your health, your wealth, your soundness, your peace. Prosperity can be equivalent to the word salvation. Yeah. And so I want you to think about that, that when I meet the expectations that God has on me, man, the blessings will begin to flow. Isn't that good? Glory to God. Come on, open your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. Amen. In Hebrews chapter 11, looking at verse 4. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 4, the Bible says, By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it, he being dead, talking about Abel, he being dead, yet speaketh. Our praise to God and our faith are tied together. Mm -hmm. Uh, by faith, you make your offering to God, and so therefore God has an expectation. We praise God whom we've not seen, yet we believe. We, we render our voices with this ruach that we've been talking about for the last few weeks, this ruach with the breath of God, and we lift our hands and perform acts and performance before our God in and by our faith. Somebody say, by my faith. By my faith. See, God, he's not a respecter of persons, but I'm here to tell you uh, uh, one thing certain and two things sure, that God, he's a respecter of your faith. Mm -hmm. yeah. he, he may not be a respecter of persons, but he respects your faith and mine. When we render praise unto God, it is paramount. It, that, that it be a praise that's acceptable unto God. Not unto you, but unto God. Uh, anything less than excellent is not acceptable. Mm -hmm. Notice, even though, yes, I know the scripture says that if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature, that old things have passed away and all things have become new. I, I got that. I, I understand that, 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 that the scripture says that, uh, that we're in Christ Jesus. I, I, I got that. I got that. But that's not the issue. 
The issue is that my praise must speak for me. I, I'm yes, I'm the righteousness of God. I yes, I, I got that. But my praise is something entirely different. I might be righteous, but my praise has got to be acceptable. Is that good? See, heaven ought to know my name. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They ought to know my name by my praise. Oh, oh, there he goes again. That oh, I know. That's 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 Dave. That's that's Dave. I recognize his praise. I I recognize his DNA. I recognize the signature from the palms of his hand, the fingerprints of his DNA. I see that there's no other praise like his. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I see him. I see. I, I can see the retina of his praise. I I can see the the gateway to heaven because he's looking into the hills from which cometh his help. I I see that he knows how to praise me because his praise is unique because there's none like. It. David, uh, whatever your, your name is, mm, mm. the retina of my praise, it gives me access. When I look up towards heaven, nobody has a retina like mine. That heaven recognizes me when then, when I can look to the hills, when I can look towards the heaven, when I look up because my help cometh from above. Amen. So when I begin to praise God, he sees the DNA. He sees my fingerprint. When I look up towards God, he sees the retina. He, that when he sees you, you, child of God, are exceptional. Yeah, you, you, yeah. you, child of God, are unique. And so when you praise God, it's your access to heaven. Come on, somebody. You're going to work with me this morning. Glory to God. Yeah, yeah. So the scripture says, by faith, see that? Hebrews chapter 11, 4. By faith, now you see what Abel's name is? You can put your name in. By faith, whatever your name is, uh, he offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it, he being dead, yet speaking. This testimony that David, or whatever your name is, that you should know how to praise God. That there should be a testimony that God knows you know how to praise him. Hallelujah. Maker of heaven and earth. Glory to God. Uh, the, the, the one who's the Alpha and the Omega. The, the almighty God who sits high and as we say we look low. But he searches the ends of the earth for a people that will praise and a people that will worship his holy name. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 so does it really take faith to praise God? That there, there lies the question. Really? It, do we really need faith to praise God? Hmm. It, it's so easy for us to praise everything else. The things that we can see. Wow. Yet we struggle, some of us. Not those here. We, we struggle, some of us, with giving God the praise that's due his name. See, we, we, we the one who gave us, again, this ruach, the, the, the breath. The breath, the breath, the ruach, the breath of God, he gave us so that we can perform, that we can we can render unto him what rightly belongs to him for the purpose in which we were created. So if you if you didn't know, now you know. Uh, faith, yes, in this unseen God, yet your spirit, it identifies with his spirit. Isn't that good? Uh, look at here. Worship, this is a statement by Lewis. Uh, Giglio, I don't know who he is, but I love his faith. He said, worship is simply giving God his breath back. Come on, what? Wait a minute. He says that worship is simply giving God his breath back. Woo! Come on, that ought to light your hair on fire. You, you remember uh, back in Genesis chapter 2, and the scripture says that God, he, he breathed into the nostrils of man, and that man became a living soul. Call to God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when God blew the, blew, blew the breath of God into his nostrils, he became a living soul. And when we praise God, yeah, 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 we're, we're giving back to him his breath. I, I, I don't care if you're playing a woodwind instrument, Brother Matt. I don't care if you're playing a trumpet or you're lifting your voice. He said, well, I can't sing. Well, play an instrument. Do something. Move your feet. Do something that will render praise unto our God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Worship is simply giving God his breath back. Turn to John chapter 1. In John chapter 1, uh, let's look at verse 18. You know, so does it really take faith to believe God? Well, we've not seen God. Have, have you seen God lately? I, 
you know, I, I'm, I'm doing this all by faith. Huh? Yeah, the scripture says in John chapter 1, verse 8, the scripture says that no man has seen God at any time. That when God says no man, guess what? No man. The only begotten son, and that's different, which is in the bosom of the father, he hath declared him. Jesus has declared God. Now, John the writer, he, he, he's not talking from or speaking from what someone told him. No, John was an eyewitness. Mm -hmm. He I, was an eyewitness of the life and the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ, the one in whom God believed. Remember, we talked about a few weeks ago that Jesus is whom God believes. Jesus has seen the Father because he descended from the Father, born in human flesh, though. Just like you and I. Glory to God. So that Jesus, he's the faith of God manifested. Now we notice that it says that by faith, Abel. Again, you can place your name there. By faith, whatever your name is. Glory to God. That you believe and that you have a faith in God. Turn to Hebrews chapter 11. In Hebrews chapter 11. Back to our first scripture. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 4 again says by faith. Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained the witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it being dead, yet speaking. Now you know the story about Cain and Abel, the firstborn sons of, of Adam and Eve, and how Cain, he, he brought his, his sacrifice before God, but it was not acceptable. But, but Abel, he, he brought his sacrifice to God, and God loved it. And so we, we're going to look at that as it relates to our praise and in our worship. Are you walking with me? Glory to God. Our offering, child of God, is, is not just in our giving. And we, we will do that later. But that, this is not what we're talking about right now. Our offering, it, it correlates, it runs alongside our praise to God. Uh, it should be noteworthy that it is acceptable to God and excellent Sacrifice. Somebody say excellent sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Not of the grain and, and the wheat, nor the fatty cat, but our sacrifice of praise and our laudation to God. And, and when we want to be acceptable unto God, that acceptable or acceptance defined, it means the action or the process of being received as adequate or suitable. Somebody say suitable. suitable. Our praise ought to be suitable. It, it, we want this ratification or this affirmation of our praise. Mm -hmm. When it comes to God and our faith, uh, we should be able to render our praises to him and there should be a spiritual receipt. Wait, 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 Pastor Dave, what, what, what you, a spiritual receipt that when you have praised God, when, when, when you have worshipped God, there should be an exchange that I, there was a, a service rendered. That there should be an exchange of, of, of services that have been rendered unto God that I gave him something and he gave me back something. Yeah. Hmm, hmm, hmm. When was the last time you got a spiritual receipt from God? Proof of services rendered. We want heaven's approval. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm? That we not just met God's approval, but that heaven was satisfied. Well, what, well how, wait, 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 how, why are we worried about anything other than God in heaven? Because heaven has a host. There are angels in heaven who, who they are professional praisers. Mm -hmm. they, they know how to, to run around the, the throne of God. And, 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 and every time they see him, they, they get a new revelation of who God is. And they say, hold up. be a spiritual receipt. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We, we praise God here on the earth, but it's just a prelude. <laughs> it's a prelude to what we're going to be doing in heaven. We were made for God's glory and for his praise, and we should want to be acceptable, not just tolerable. Hmm. Okay. But don't worry. That, that, that's what we want. We want to be noteworthy 
So all we're trying to do is to raise our level of expectation in our praise and in our worship. Look at this. Look at this. This, this another uh, quote says this: that any man or woman on the earth that is bored and turned off by worship is not ready for heaven. Come on here. What? If you don't know how to praise and to worship God, if you are bored and you're ready to go home and watch sports, and if you don't feel like coming to the house of God because you got stuff to do and you don't know how to praise God, you're not ready for heaven. You can stop turning around your Christian card. You ain't ready. If you don't enjoy praising our God, worshiping our God, you ain't ready. I heard someone say, you didn't understand the assignment. Hmm. Heaven is everything we need it to be. You know, God says that we can experience days of heaven on the earth. And if you can just get into his presence by your praise and in your worship, you can have a heavenly experience. Isn't that good? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. So our consideration must be given. Don't give God what's left over. Come on. Come on. We, we do all of these things and then we praise God. We, we go throughout the day and then we might read a scripture. We go through all. No, God wants what's first. He wants the first fruits of your praise. Now, Pastor Carol will tell you, I don't like leftovers. Huh? We, we go to a restaurant, I'll eat it all. I ain't taking nothing off. Because I don't like leftovers. I, I think I might have some issues that I have not yet resolved when I was a child. Because Mama said, if you don't eat this for your dinner, you're going to have it for your breakfast. Come on, somebody. I'm not that old. Some, some, somebody know what I'm talking You will not be wasting food in this house. You, I know you don't like spinach, but guess what? You go listen. I remember I, I I got in so much trouble. I did not like spinach, and I don't know what was wrong with me, but I would throw my spinach behind the refrigerator. And you know it don't take long before you find out that something's wrong. <laughs> Glory to God. Dad pulled out the refrigerator, and there's all this old spinach behind the refrigerator. And let's just say that that was the last whipping I ever got. Glory to God. Hey, hey man, let's get, what a radical that was. Hey, so we have to understand that God don't want what's left over. He wants what's first. Yes, yes. So if there's a more excellent sacrifice, then reason says to me there must be a less than excellent sacrifice. Our heart must not only be in our giving, but in our substance of what we're rendering unto God. If your praise and your worship or your acts of adoration towards God don't move you, who is spirit? Uh, how do you expect it to move God who gave you the spirit? Ah, ah we, I, I believe that the next time when we gather together in our praise and our worship, then we're going to have a different attitude towards our praise because we want the blessing from heaven to overflow. Isn't that right? Amen. Now, by faith or absolute trust in God, Abel, he gave or he rendered unto God the very best. Notice it was God was the one that gave it to him in the first place. His giving, it spoke for him both in his life and in his death. Wait a minute. Abel gave such a great offering to God that it spoke volumes of him, not while he was just living, but it spoke of his, his, his ability to give and his heart after he was dead. Mm. I see that. Our praise and our worship, it should be our ambassador towards heaven. That the gates of heaven, when we begin to praise and to worship God, the gates of heaven just open wide. Yes, yes. Come on, say this with me. I have an, op an absolute obligation to praise God. Come on, say that with me. I have an absolute obligation to praise God. 
and, and I'm going to say this one again too. Uh, uh, my praise, just so we clear about what praise and worship is, my praise is an act. It's an act. It's a performance. It's my behavior. But my worship. It's not based on my performance. It's based on my reverence to God. Listen, child of God, you can start off in praise, but end up in worship. Huh? You, 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 you can, can be giving God the glory and, and lifting up your voice and praise, and next thing you know, you're flat out on the floor. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, okay, I, I, I'm okay, right here, right here. Mm. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. I, I need you to listen intently. Possessing a keen spirit in your praise and in your worship is a dangerous one. An alienation from God because of your lack of recognizing that God has an expectation of excellence in what we offer him, whether it's in our act of praise or our performance or of our reverence and worship, how dare we render to God leftovers and not the first fruits of our emotions, of our love and our need to satisfy the thirst of our giving and that it shall be given. Good measure running over shall men give it to your bosom. My, our praise is what God desires. A keen spirit is selfish. A keen spirit is thankless. A keen spirit is stingy. A keen spirit is jealous. If it is not confronted, it would lead to the murder or the killing of your ability to do what God created you to do. Mm -hmm. It will cause you to give your least and the leftovers to the giver of life and that of righteousness. There's this, I, I, I've termed it godless energy. <coughs> Godless energy is when you don't render that power or that ability to God, but to the devil, to Satan, who is a murderer, the Bible says, and the father of lies. In John chapter 8, in John chapter 8, in verse 42, the Bible says, Jesus said unto them, if God were your father, ye would love me, for I proceeded forth and came from God. Jesus is talking <coughs> Neither came I of myself, but he, talking about God, sent me, Jesus. Why do you not understand my speech? Even because you cannot hear my word. Verse 44. Ye are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Your praise that isn't directed towards God is godless energy. You're either praising God or you're praising something else. Mm -hmm. Rendering laudation to that thing or the devil in his kingdom. Listen, his, his modus operandi Brother Curtis, his, his mode of operation has already been peaked. Do you remember the story? We remember the story when, when, when Satan had taken Jesus to the pinnacle, the highest part of the temple, and he said, if you would just bow down and worship me, he says, all of these kingdoms, it would be yours, Jesus, if you just bow, bow down and work. What? Wait, 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 well, wait, wait. The scripture tells me that Jesus, he created all things. How is it that this thing is going to offer to the Lord our God, to Jesus, the Christ of God, the kingdoms of the world? He didn't, we peeped his whole heart. All he wants you and I to do is to bow down and to worship him. And guess what he will give you? The kingdoms of this world system. Let that sink in for a moment. If you just bow down and worship me, I'll give you the kingdoms of this world. When you can praise everything else, your sports, your house, your cars, your job, your family, it's godless energy. When Jehovah God, when Almighty God, 
with the Alpha and the Omega is not considered in rendering your praise. Suspicious, jealous, and self lauding people, they don't praise God. They praise something else. That energy must be expended. Because we were made, we were born to praise, but when you don't have it directed towards God, that's God's energy. You and I, we must take an examination of ourselves and allow the word of God to be the judge of our motives in our praise, the judge of our motives in our worship, if we're going to truly worship God. You know, I, I, when I hear something like this, I, 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 I take it personally. What? what Pastor, they were just what? What are you doing? What? What? How, what's your praise like? What's the motive behind your praise? Is your praise, Pastor, they genuine? See, I can't, I can't vouch for y'all. I don't know what you do when you're in that heat. but I got to look at my own life. Is my praise? Is my worship? Is it acceptable? Not just acceptable, but is it more acceptable? See, I shouldn't be just be satisfied with acceptable. I want to be more acceptable. I don't want Cain to have nothing on me. What? Yeah. I live under a new covenant. Come on. Somebody yeah. work with me this morning. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Last scripture. Sister D, thank you for reading this scripture for us today. First Chronicles, chapter 16. First Chronicles chapter 16 says, sing, verse 23, sing unto the, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital E, sing unto the Lord, all the earth, show forth from day to day, <laughs> that covers every day of the week, day to day, his salvation. I love when, when the psalmist says that God will show us his salvation, not my salvation, but the salvation that God gives. Declare his glory among the heathen. Yes. Declare his glory among the heathen. Yes. That your praise ought to get them uncomfortable. The way you carry yourself ought to make them feel uncomfortable. When, when you don't have any problem with rendering praise unto the our God, when he's done something good for you, when you call upon his name, it ought to make them feel uncomfortable. Hmm. His marvelous works among all nations when we render our praises unto God. God takes pleasure in the praises of his people. I believe today. Stand your feet. I believe today that during our service, in our praise, and in our worship, whether we recognize lyrics or not. You can be moved by the music. You, 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 and most times, you don't even really, really need music. That the scripture says that we can sing hymns and songs and spiritual. We, we, can, do, we can render all of this to the Lord, our God. All we're trying to do, child of God, is to raise your level of expectation in your praise. Not just here, but also in your home life. In everything that you do, don't have Godless energy. You are born of God. And because you are born of God, He wants to see your record. He wants to see your fingerprint. He wants to hear your vocals. He wants the ruach of God. He wants to hear and smell your fragrance of your praise. So when you lift your hands, God sees your fingerprints, your, 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 your specific DNA. When you lift up your eyes toward heaven, he sees the retina of your eyes. Nobody has a retina like yours. It's, it it, it all unlocks heaven's doors. Father God, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we, the people of God, have an expectation from you that when we look towards the hills from what's coming by help, that Lord God, that you would recognize our praise that you will pour out Lord God the things that you have already prepared for us you said that you have plans for us not to do us harm, not to do us good but to give us a good life 
and expect it in, God. So we render back to you the ruach, the grasp of God. That we will render praise unto your name. We thank you, Lord. Receive our praise today. Our acts, our performance. But we ask that you also will receive our worship, our laudation, our recognition of who you are in all that you've done. And for that we give you praise and much thanksgiving. In Jesus' name. Every head bowed. If you're here today, if you're watching today, and you've never received the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, we ask that you would pray this simple prayer with us. And if you need to rededicate your life, you can still say this simple prayer. Say this with me. Dear Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner and I need to be saved. I believe that you sent Jesus to the earth to die on the cross for all of my sins, past, present, and future. I believe in my heart that you raised Jesus from the dead on the third day. And he's now seated with you in heaven. I want to live this life on your terms. This resurrected life on your terms. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. In Jesus' name. Glory to God. We, we say that it is just that simple. You know, the Bible says that we can rejoice that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Amen. At this time, I also want to ask that uh, <laughs> the doors, glory to God, of the church are open. <laughs> if you are looking for a church home and you need a place of worship, glory to God. Harvest Christian Ministries International is a place where we believe the Lord of the harvest has called us to gather souls for the kingdom of God. We're here because of the call of God, the unction of God on our lives to save souls. To be a place where people can come and to learn how to live this resurrected life of the Lord Jesus Christ. We believe that the Bible is the authority, the final authority is God's word. So we're going to teach the word of God here. If you're watching and you're not close by, we ask you to find a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church. So you can learn how to live this life that God has called us to. That you know how to praise, how to worship, and how to be able to live the life that God has called you to. If there's anyone here today, if you want to become a covenant partner with us, with this ministry, we ask that you will come. Also, if you have need of prayer, we ask that you will come. Because we believe that the prayers of the righteous, it availeth much and it's powerful. It's working. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord God. Father, we thank you for those who have rendered their lives unto you, God. The lifting of their hands, their act of submission towards heaven. We pray if there are those who want to receive baptism of Holy Spirit, that Holy Spirit make your abode in them right now. That they have that desire. You say that no man can say that Jesus is the Christ unless Holy Spirit is in them. Make your vote in them. Give them the language of heaven. On earth we have languages, English, Spanish, German. We have all these languages in the earth, but we need to have heaven's language. And it's the language or the tongues that we speak unto the Lord our God. It is heaven's language. And if you have need of that, Lord, we pray that you will open up the windows of heaven and pour out your spirit upon them that they may be received with the evidence of praying in the spirit. And that also that they will have the interpretation and the understanding also. And for those who have joined us today, we thank you, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus. I declare that also like in the book of Acts, when you add it to the ministry daily, we thank you, Father, for you've given us vision that we see this place full. Glory to God. You've given this medium of the internet where it's worldwide. Glory to God. We thank you, Father. For that, we give you praise and much thanksgiving. And all the people said, amen. 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 amen and amen. Praise God. It is at this time now in the service. 
where uh, you can continue in your worship. And it's in your giving. Amen? Glory to God. If you're texting to give, of course, the number is 844-970-4996. There's information that's on the screen and one across the screen for your uh, edification. Uh, also, there's Cash App that we're still utilizing for the ministry, which is the dollar sign, H-C-M-I-L-I-F-E. We thank you in advance for your giving. We thank you that uh, you're handling kingdom business. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. And while you're uh, preparing your word, uh, preparing your, your, your offering, your tithe, your offering, I'm, I'm going to go back again to Hebrews chapter 11. That by faith, Abel, he offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice. Now we're talking about giving. Now, 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 now we're, we're talking about the actual giving part, the offering. A more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. That Abel was righteous because of his heart, his giving towards God. He gave God his very best. Cain didn't do so much. No. But God testified that, that in his giving, that, that Abel gave so much, that he gave of his goodness of his heart towards God because he recognized that God is the giver of every good and perfect gift. And so he was just giving back to God. And that blessed God. It, it gave God the testimony. That God was able to testify about Abel's giving. And I'm here to tell you, child of God, that it's all about the heart. It's not so much about the amount, but it's, the, it's in your giving of your heart. Let God have this testimony in your offering today. Let God have this testimony in your tithe today. Let your, your giving speak for you. Do you realize when you are doing kingdom business, when God begins to pass out the crowns of glory, when he begins to call the roll, do you realize that when you give into ministry, that it allows men and women to become born again? That when he calls the roll, you, you're going to hear so many names that are being called as, as on your account. Why? Because you have given to the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. Souls are coming into the kingdom because of your giving. It's on your account when you give in kingdom business. My God, that's revelational knowledge right there. Every time I give, every time I text, every time I cash out towards the things of God, people are coming into the kingdom and it's being added to my heavenly account. Your crowns, child of God are being filled because of your giving. If you're ready to give, come on and sing. Hallelujah. Praise God. If you're ready, you can lift your offering, your tithe and your offering towards God. I want you to make a shift. And the shift being in the heart of why you're giving. When you give towards God, you can name your sin. Everybody here in the building has a need and you can you can hold God. God says, bring me into remembrance of my word. Well, God, your word says that I shall always have it. You, you, your word says that I can have good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over show men given to my bosom. You said, God, that you will open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that I would not have room enough to receive. I bring you, God, into remembrance of your word. So this seed, this, this money that I'm sowing today, that I'm giving to the kingdom of God, that Whatever the need is, that's between you and God. Whatever that need is, you name this seed. You name what's on that envelope. You name what you put in cash out. You name it in your heart. That God, this is what I need from heaven. We are, remember, we are in partnership with God. So Father, I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus, you bless the people of God in their giving, that their needs are met. And we speak to our seed and we command it to go and to grow and to multiply and return. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you for your giving. Hallelujah. Come, come on and rejoice. Come on and put your hands together and, and, and render praise. Come this is how you water your seed. You water the seed of your giving with your praise. Hallelujah. You ought to have an expectation that it's going to return back to you. Hallelujah. Good measure. Press down. Shake it together. Show men give it to your bosom that you shall say, I will always have. Come on, say it with me. I will always have. I will always have. I will always have. I will always have. Glory to God. And 
And the reason for you to always have it so that you can also share with others. Amen. Isn't that good? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. We pray that this service today has been a blessing to you. We would ask that you would reach out to your neighbor, talk to your girlfriend, talk to your buddy, invite them out to worship here at 1775 Sand Line Road here in Davenport, Florida at Citrus Ridge Academy School that Harvest Christian Ministries International that we are here on purpose because God put us here. And we're so grateful unto God for all of you that are here and those that are watching online. I'm going to pronounce the blessing over you. Hallelujah. And I, I'm going to do something. If you notice my hands, notice this is not Star Trek. If you notice something, I learned this this week and I want to share it. I've been waiting to share it. Spock Him being a, uh, what is it, a Vulcan? A Vulcan. They said you need to come up with some type of symbol or something to identify with your people. Spock, well, the gentleman, uh, I forget his name now, he is of Hebrew descent. And the priest, the high priest, he would stretch his hand towards the people and bless them. And this symbol, or this sign, it actually means Sharia. It's the first letter in the name Sharia, the name of God. It means blessing. So I'm going to pronounce the blessing over your lives. Now he says, go forth and prosper. But I'm going to say, beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers in Jesus' name. And all the church says, amen, amen, amen and amen. Praise God. Hallelujah.